Excuse me, can you uh, tell me which way is catering? I thought I was doing that part. Oh. <laughs> Man, that was a long drive. Can you tell me which way is catering? With Justine and Bruce. Served up by Variety Attractions, celebrating 60 years of entertainment excellence. Make sure to visit us at varietyattractions.com. Today's backstage tour, we're going to talk with Mallory Lewis and Lamb Chop. And uh, this is a really special episode because Mallory, she's an honest person. And I really didn't think we would learn as much as we did. I mean, it's very insightful. Yeah, when we talked with Mallory and Lamb Chop, who was a bit sassy, talked about her mom, Sherry Lewis, and there was some great, insightful uh, comments that Mallory made and visions from her mom. I mean, it was a great, great interview. Funny stories from fairs, um, you know, both past and present with Sherry's um, time that she spent performing at fairs and Mallory's time at fairs. And how much they love us. Well, that's a given. I know. That's a pat on the back. You know, and Mallory talks a lot about, um, you know, words of wisdom from her mom, whether it's professionalism or, you know, not taking your emotional temperature. It's really something to live by and listen to. Preparation and perspiration. (laughs) And when I talk with Lamb Chop, it's so heartfelt. She's so sassy. Felt. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Nobody. Nope. Okay. Well, let's just get to it. That was just... a, can you tell that joke again? That was really good. And uh, Lamb Chop talks about her recent Instagram posts. Should we keep talking about this or do we just get right to the backstage tour? Let's do it. Do you have your backstage pass I've visible? I've got mine. I've got mine. Okay. Well, this is the way. Let's do it. Just one, two. Jack, Jack, Mike, Mike. Jack, Jack. See, I think when we're recording, Mm -hmm. it's better if you, I know you'll like this terminology that I use, and no, it's not swallow. (laughs) It's you need to ride the microphone closer than me. Because when we- You're loud and obnoxious mm -hmm, and I'm not. And you're quiet. (laughs) You're quiet and dainty. <laughs> dainty. Ooh, dainty. I don't know if I've ever been called dainty before. <laughs> That's why I just said it. So I'm like ass naked in the bathroom reaching for my towel and I'm See, like, that's when we my... should zoom. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, is my phone ringing? And I like dried off and got dressed and especially I, like... if you have your phone and you're in the shower, you always you and someone calls. I'm not saying that this has happened to me, but Every time I answer the phone, it's almost like, is the camera on? <laughs> <laughs> is this FaceTime? Are we FaceTime? Yeah, right I don't now? need to scare anybody. Okay, you ready? <laughs> Three, two, one, let's go. <laughs> Today, Mallory Lewis and Lamb Chop. Joining us yep. for Which Way is Catering with Justine and Bruce. We're so happy to have you. So happy to be here. And the audience at home that's listening can't see your cute, smiling faces. Or yours. Or mine. Yes. There you go. Or lamb chops. Or, or, that, lamb chops. Or, or that great view of the Pacific Ocean. It is a beautiful view. The ocean is sparkling. If only it were safe to leave the house and go down to it. Yeah, that's true. But... <laughs> I should mention the the first time I met Mallory Lewis and Lamb Chop, I was very nervous because She's I remember he's heard about you, Bruce. Yeah. And I remember as a kid, my parents had a Sherry Lewis and Lamb Chop record. And on the big phonograph in the living room, uh, I would listen to that album. And then when I met Mallory and Lamb Chop for the first time. I went into the trailer to meet them. And when I met Mallory and we hit it off right away, I thought, okay, it's ready to, ready to bring lamb chop out. Well, I'm thinking this is going to be, you know, bodyguard security, James Bond, silver case, retinal scan, thumb 
print voice recognition <laughs> phrase from uh, from Hamlet, something it's under lock and key. Oh yeah, this yeah. whole thing. And Mallory goes, "Oh, here's Lamb Chop." Pulls her out of a Target bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, David Copperfield is the only person other than myself to um, have a lamb chop. And he's got a secret museum, which is a public secret um, in Vegas. And one of the rooms is a, a room dedicated to ventriloquism because he started as a ventriloquist. And um, so he has a, a, a lamb chop and I've loaned him a hush puppy and a Charlie horse in his display. And the first time he showed it to me, he uh, said, I usually close with the ventriloquist room because he takes tours. He said, but um, I know we're both really nervous about this. So let's start there. And I was thinking, eh, I'm not that nervous. It's okay with me, you know, but fine. So we go in there and the puppet's eye lines were slightly off. And so I said to David, he said, do you mind if I fix Lamb Chop's eye line. And he goes, no, no, of course. And I just reached over and grabbed her little face and smushed it. And he goes, <laughs> like that. What's wrong? He goes, we only touch her with white gloves on. That's great. Now, see, I'm sure you have uh, stories that are that will probably fill our podcast from here till 10 years from now. But why don't you share some of your great you know, kind of trailer stories that we always call them, uh, backstage stories like with, on. yeah, with, you know, with, you know, with your mom, with Lamb Chop at different like fairs, events, all that kind of stuff. I used to love traveling with my mom and she also did fairs, um, uh, usually on, on the big stage. And um, she also performed in gowns, you know, big gowns. And they'd often have a trailer behind the stage. And, and I remember that she couldn't go to the bathroom when she had her gown on because it wouldn't fit in the port in the tiny toilets in the trailer. <laughs> and then another time they the, the cows uh, were always walked between in the area between the trailer and the stage and she had to have stage hands carry her over the cow shit. <laughs> 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 yeah. And, Fairs are particularly interesting. I have had some experiences. Um, and you know, as an entertainer, you try and be a good sport. And you understand if you're doing a fair, it's not a performing arts center. So, you know, just like you're not going to get a fried churro at a performing arts center, you're unlikely to get um, a, a sort of really good venue at a fair. So I remember I was at one fair and I was trying to be a good sport. And the stadium was right behind where my smaller stage was. And I think it was the last day, I'm about five minutes into my show and the monster truck rally started behind my stage. <laughs> and I just sort of stopped, paused, looked at the audience, shrugged and walked off stage. And the, the, uh, the guy who booked me said, why did you stop your show? I go, cause I'm not louder than a monster truck. <laughs> I go, I, that was another time I was on stage and I heard like a noise behind me and I saw the whole audience, all of a sudden their eyes got really big and their jaws dropped. And I'm thinking, and I was in the middle of a song, so I was kind of busy and I'm thinking, what's happening? And it turned out the pig closure from the pig races behind me had broken and my stage was swarmed with piglets. <laughs> so <laughs> that, was, that was a good one. Um, and actually at Wisconsin, I was, my son was calling my show um, and just to backtrack, my son, when he was eight, started going on the road with me and, and cueing all my music and handling my sound. We showed, we had just left Ohio and we showed up at Wisconsin and uh, Sean Emery um, comes up to my son and goes, you're Jamie, huh? Just so you know, I don't like kids, but I've been told I'm going to like you. And my <laughs> son goes, well, I guess we'll see. <laughs> we'll find out and so Bex, you know he's he's jamie's right off the the uh stage and um calling my show and i start to sing and they fired up the diesel generator at the burger place next door and the diesel smokes comes flying over the stage i inhale a bunch of it start choking and coughing and i had to jump off the stage ran backstage grabbed my son's t-shirt and proceeded to blow my nose into his t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> so, um, so all those years traveling with your mom and Lamb Chop um, as a kid, when did it get to a point where it was like, yeah, I want to, I, I, I want to, I want to be with Lamb Chop. It. This was not, I was my mom's head writer. I was her producer. I produced Lamb Chop's Play Along, Charlie Orr's Music Pizza. I did not think of myself as a performer, which shows you how little attention was actually paid to me as a child that nobody noticed that I was a performer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, and, but when mom died, I kept getting letters, you know, is Lamb Chop dead too? And, so I was pregnant when my mom died and I started traveling around doing accepting posthumous awards for her mom. Mm. And my ex-husband pointed out quite accurately, we can't make a living with you accepting posthumous awards. Are you going to do this? And so I put Lamb Chop in a podium before one of the many posthumous awards. And um, I didn't tell anybody. And I got on stage and I slipped her on and all she said was Sherry would be so proud. Um, and there was... If it had been a script, it would have said collective gasp, audience bursts into applause. <laughs> um, and I thought, ooh, ooh, we ooh. got something. I, got I like that. <laughs> um, so that was really how it started. Um, some guy whose name I'm blanking on, I apologize, guy, um, called me and said, uh, Mallory, this is so-and-so from the whatever theater. I've been following your career. And I remember looking at the phone thinking, I have a career? Career. <laughs> and he goes, I want you to do a Christmas show. And this was, I think it was like Memorial Day, Labor Day weekend, Memorial Day weekend for not that Christmas, but the mm -hmm. following. No, it was only about nine months. So I don't know what holiday it was, but I said, let me call you back after X holiday weekend. Um, and I thought, okay, am I going to do this? And I thought, hell yeah, why not? So I called him back and said, yes. So then I had nine months to learn an act, an entire hour and a half, and, um, and write an act and um, learn songs. And I remember my ex-husband came backstage like right before the show. And he was sweating and his eyes were giant. He looked at me and he goes, there's hundreds of people out there. <laughs> and I went, yeah, that's why we're here. He's like, you go on in like two minutes. I'm like, uh -huh. And here's the thing, you know, in that nine months, you had to, not only did you have to come up with the act and music and routine and all of that, but you have a iconic figure who is Lamb Chop. Of course. And because I'm the iconic figure. I'm so iconic. There should be statues of me. Okay, now how come you haven't been on this whole time, Lamb Chop? Because I was day drinking. <laughs> <laughs> what's your What's your favorite drink, Lamb Chop? Bloody Caesar. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't day drinking. Okay. Well, maybe that was she yesterday. was. Yeah, that was. Yeah, she's. That just, was yesterday. It started yesterday, and it just kind of kept going through today. Yeah. So, so, but then what I was going to go back to was that now you have to come out here with lamb chop, and you, you know, have to be a ventriloquist. Lamb I mean, you have to sound never exactly. Never a problem. Oh, that was never a problem. She spoke um, for herself from the beginning. That was never. I had to learn things like. Uh, turn your mic on before you go on stage. Take your cell phone out of your pocket before you go on stage. And if the stage manager is gesticulating wildly at you, he knows you're on stage. He probably has something you need to know. No, yeah. So I had to learn, find the opening to the curtain before they call your name. <laughs> you know, those are uh, the, the, the practicalities of being a performer, what I had to learn, uh, particularly because my mom performed with live music and she traveled with a bit of an entourage. I mean, she, not like in a Kardashian nonsense way, but she had an assistant. She had a musical uh, conductor. Um, and by the time I got to performing, nobody was paying for backup musicians. And uh, it was all tracks. And um, I remember at one fair that I was at, 
I was doing my final song, which is, you, you've heard of Rhapsody. It's the pretty fast mm -hmm. one that closes mm -hmm. the song that does that. And the stage manager in Ohio, who should remain nameless, came out and um, started giving me the wrap it up faster signal because the parade was coming. And I remember looking at him thinking, first of all, you can't go faster than this. And second of all, it's tracks. Like what <laughs> am I supposed to do to speed this up? Yeah. You know? So, um, so for me, there was a lot of, I remember the first time I, my first tour, I remember sitting at my desk and looking and going, where's the envelope with all my tickets and everything in it? And I realized, oh, wait, I don't have a staff. I probably need to fill that envelope myself. No, yes. <laughs> you know, mom would, give me, her assistant would hand her a packet that had all her tickets and hotel arrangements and the driver's names and all that stuff. And I was like, oh, that's not, hmm. that's a, hmm. Now, Justine, so, had a, had, Justine had a question about Lamb Chop. Well, when a mommy lamb and a daddy lamb love each other <laughs> very much. And day drink. And day drink. And day drink. And one sock leads to another. Right. That's, exactly. That's everyone's hobby in 2020 slash 2021. So, okay. So lamb chop itself. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> lamb chop itself, herself. How many yes. lamb chops exist? So you said David Copperfield oh, has I'm one. Cool. I would have to shoot you. Okay. Okay. On another note, <laughs> on a uh, more so, so the look of disappointment on your no, face. I know, Justin no, no, was just like, Bong. I'm a little disappointed. Yeah. But, but okay. And my follow up question then would be do you have your mother's lamb chop or is she yes. retired? Yes. You have your mother's. Um, yes, I, I have. Yes, I, I love working with my mom's lamb chops. Some have, there have been lamb chops that have been made for me. Um, moms are better, even though we have the exact same size hand. The older the lamb chop, the more imbued with lamb chop spirit. Now this, I know that sounds crazy, particularly because I don't believe in anything. Like if I can't see it, taste it, drink it, wear it, I don't believe in it, but mm -hmm. I do wear lamb chop. And I know that the older the chop, the better. <laughs> okay. I have a question about the, the, uh, the audience's reaction to Lamb Chop. Now, I've seen your show with the audience. And when they get to meet Lamb Chop after the show, I mean, you can't even. They, they get teary eyed. Right. I mean, it is. It's emotional. Over the top. Yeah. Yeah. What's your, do you have like your favorite person you met, your least favorite person mm. you met, something, well, something, did, did someone try to steal lamb chop? I well, mean, I'll tell you I, okay, so I was performing um, in uh, Hawaii, my son was five, and I was, I, the people who owned this lovely hotel, I ran into at a convention or something, and they said, would you be willing to trade some 15 minute pre luau shows for a all expense paid vacation for you and your family. And I'm like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so <laughs> twice um, they, had, they had us in the King Kamehameha suite, flew us first class, gave us a car, all food was included. And I had to do like four shows. Okay. Which it meant I would perform the next three days. People around the pool would be like, I love you. You're wonderful, which every performer likes. Then I'd perform again, new people, we love you. And it was just, and we did this three years in a row. Well, I think this was the second year. And after the show, I would sign autographs and my son would carry my somnambulant, my husband would carry my somnambulant son back to the room. I'd meet them. And I'm doing an autographing and this woman comes up and she goes, I know you're not really Sherry Lewis's daughter. And I'm like, yeah, I am. And she'd go, no, uh, she said, no, I know everything about Sherry Lewis and she didn't have a daughter. And I'm like, Wow. Okay. Okay. I just went, okay, next, you know, next. <laughs> and like, I mean, like, what are you going to do? So my son, after the, I would do two luau's a night. And, but after the first luau, he would always stand in the autograph line and at the very back. And, and I was like, why do you want mommy's autograph? And he had them up in his room. And my ex-husband said, well, you know, it's because everybody else, he saw everybody standing in line for my autograph. So he thought it 
was something he should want. He no longer wants my autograph unless it's on a check. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, right, of That's course. Yeah. Uh, well, um, but- Was yeah, Lamb Chop so that, ever uh, afraid at a luau? Was she ever concerned being yes, a lamb but, chop at a no, luau? Was, <laughs> no, because they don't really do lamb. Okay. Miss Piggy would have something to worry about. Okay. She, well, I mean, a barbecue, <laughs> uh, cookout. One night that was kind of creepy, though, because the last people in line, now mind you, it's a deserted luau ground, right? I have to walk a quarter mile to the hotel. No big deal. You wouldn't think. Um, the last people in line were like religious nuts. <laughs> and they were like, we want to pray for you. We want to, you know, and I, I was like, let's do it at the hotel, <laughs> you know, let's <laughs> get to where there's people. People um, and witnesses. So they're holding this like baby, maybe 12 months old. And they go, our daughter's found Jesus. I'm like, your daughter can't find her mouth with the spoon. But <laughs> they were, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but so, but my, I guess my most favorite people, what I love is, People after a show come up to me and they'll hug me. They'll say, you were so great. Your mom would be so proud of you. Now, who doesn't want to hear that? Oh, you know, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I mean, and, and to hear it um, often. I was talking to um, actually my, my manager today uh, and a lovely presenter named Jessica Akers uh, down at the Fellaini Performing Arts Center. Um, you should talk to her as well. I'll okay. hook you up. Um, and, um, you know, I was saying that for performers, people will often say, oh, should my child go into show business? And I'm like, if your child doesn't have a giant hole in their heart that can only be filled by the approval of complete strangers, they should probably skip it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really hard business but yeah. if if that's you know some people have a b12 deficiency other people have an applause deficiency um and so it's it's i love performing i think i'm the luckiest person in the world i get on a plane i go to some place um somebody nice meets me at the airport they take me to a nice hotel the next day I go into a nice venue where there are nice, talented sound people who make me sound way better than I sound in the shower. Um, <laughs> and I get to sing and, and then I, somebody feeds me and then I get to do my show. And I have an audience of people who laugh at my jokes and applaud for my singing and grin at me and clap for the videos of my mom that I show. Mm -hmm. And then after someone hands me money and then a whole bunch of people tell me that it was wonderful and that my mother would be proud of me. Wow. I like that job description. And then you, know? you take lamb chop, throw her in a target bag and you're <laughs> off to the next venue. Exactly. So yeah, performers are, it's, it's a, uh, it's a lovely thing to be able to do. Absolutely so, lovely. So and then Zoom doesn't do it <laughs> and zoom doesn't do it yeah. so then okay so you were on the producing side when your yeah. mom was doing shows you were writing and producing and now you're performing do you per do you like performing way over producing or are they just different or no, what do you like, prefer? they're just different but the performing is um fun for the hour that you're doing it um I always say I don't charge for my shows. I charge for the travel because travels, that kind of travel is difficult. Um, the show I would do for free. Uh, matter of fact, I'll pay people to let me do it. Um, the producing is a brain exercise. Producing is organizing and um, thinking it's a chess game, thinking six steps ahead, if then, but what if. Um, Whereas performing is, performing is like skydiving, which I have 700 skydives, so I feel pretty you confident do not. talking about it. 700? Google uh, Jump for the Cause. It was a women's world record skydiving event that my partner, Kate Cooper, and I organized for a decade. And we raised $2 million cool. for breast cancer. Nice. That's fantastic. Does Lamb Chop so skydive? 
She does. She has four women's world records because she <laughs> no. I not actually girl. kicked off the first of the four events for taking out a quadrant as we were attempting this. Um, and but Lamb Chop rode in the girls' jumpsuits and usually took about 13 jumps to build the world record to build the formation. And like the first jump, I'd auction Lamb Chop off for 20 bucks to the charity, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, and by the end, it was like 500 bucks to have Lamb Chop in your jumpsuit because as as you got closer, so she has four uh, USPA, United <laughs> States Parachute Association, women's world record uh, certifications. So I did, got, she, did she enjoy it? Can we ask well, she her? Grew uh, up, she grew up lint, <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, I really liked, I really liked um, riding in the girls' jumpsuits because it was long and their boobies were squishy. <laughs> <laughs> I think she felt that it was a, a well padded spot in case of, of a poor landing. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Very soft. Yes. Yes. Very so, what soft. Else, so does uh, Lamb Chop want to talk to us for a little bit? Sure. Um, hello, Justine. Hi, Lamb Chop. Miss you. Hello, Drews. I wish I could kiss you because the one time you kissed me and we did tongue was awesome. Oh. <laughs> You, Lamb Chop, you give the best sock. <laughs> I'm glad you felt that way. And that was a pun, by the way, that she's glad you felt that way because her tongue is made out of felt. Felt. Right. I, I got gotcha. you. Um, right. so, so, Lamb Chop, um, what else have you been doing in this uh, kind of difficult time? Well nothing i've been taking pictures in little outfits and posting them oh that's not it so i play dress up and i go riding horses with mallory and i try and stay away from the dog who thinks i'm a chew toy <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's quiet around here yeah i'm sure it's real quiet so i'm sure lamb chop you you miss kind of going out on tour with mallory Oh, I miss it so bad. All I want to do is get in front of the audience and have them go woo, 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 and clap the knee and get to sing. This is the song that doesn't end. Yes, it goes on and on. My friend sings. Some people started singing it, and now we might have won. And they'll continue singing it forever just because this is the song that. Okay, I'm not. Enough, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> so, so it's good to see Lamb Chop. It's good to see Mallory. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I probably had a, another question, Mallory, of all, all the times you spent with your mom, which was 24 7. I mean, what was the best takeaway from her? Uh, if you could talk about it personally and professionally, well, um. She had a bunch of sayings. Um, the day begins the night before. What that means is if you have a big day the next day, go to bed early and lay your clothes out. You know, like preparation. Preparation and perspiration uh, equal success. Um, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. If you see an enormous task ahead of you, don't think of how big the task is, but think about the steps that you need to take one bite at a time. Um, get your feet off the coffee table. That was another one. Um, but <laughs> no, she was she was incredibly hardworking. Um, she also had one that was good that is very applicable during these times. Don't take your emotional temperature. Just you know, we can't always avoid sinking into um, depression or hopelessness. I mean, th these are depressing times. Um, but it, it, if you don't think, I, I don't know whether this is good advice or not, but um, if you don't think about what's going on and just keep moving, <laughs> you'll get to the other end. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure whether that's good or bad, but, 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 but she and and um, professionalism. I mean, like I I try to never make a mistake backstage that will cause a mistake on stage. I don't, you know, I don't 
drink before performing. And I mean, at a fair, that's whatever, because it's during the day. Mm -hmm. But like I've, I've done the Magic Castle a lot. And a lot, you know, sometimes performers will have a cocktail before a show. Well, okay. You know, a cocktail probably isn't going to affect some people. As a ventriloquist, you don't really want to slow your tongue down. Um, but I, I, she just, you know, I always try and show up prepared, knowing my material, having my equipment ready. Um, and she was just a professional. And that's what I really try to do. I try not to, my, it always makes me laugh if people, I, I, I have a, a routine that I do with Lamb Chop that you've heard. Um, it's it's a, a slightly blue. And one woman came up to me after the show and she goes, your mother would have been ashamed about that routine. And I said, madam, my mother wrote that routine. <laughs> so you know, I always love when people presume to tell me uh, what my mother's politics would have been or what, you know, uh, that kind of thing. I think it's great that everybody feels that they knew my mom. Um, and really what you saw is what you got from her but there was more than what you saw. Um, and so- Could uh, I, Lamb Chop be a little blue right now? No, I can't really think of anything blue to say except, um, um, what could I say? <laughs> no, I can't. I, okay, I, I, all I, right, I, that's all right, that's all right. I, that's right. Think of it. I mean, I was tempted, there's a, a great show on Netflix right now called The History uh, or history of swearing or history of swear words mm -hmm. yep um but i try not to although in private conversation lamb chop may occasionally uh cross the line i try not to do that on anything recorded because <laughs> it is, lamb chop. she's a six-year-old and yeah. um you know so <laughs> but so, if you want to call me back later off <laughs> a loose break for you bruce <laughs> so so sherry being a female during that time in the entertainment business. I mean, she was a pioneer mm -hmm. and yeah. um, just so much respect for her. Uh, the one hey. question I have, how did, I mean, how did Lamb Chop come about with her? How did they meet? Well, my grandpa was Peter Pan, the magic man, the official magician for the city of New York. And um, he uh, was a vaudevillian as well. And, um, so he also was a college professor and my grandma was a teacher. And so during the depression, they had not money, but they both were working, you know? Mm -hmm. So they like, and a lot of my grandpa's friends weren't. And so he would uh, help them out, give them money and stuff. So one person in exchange taught little Sherry how to juggle, another taught her how to do, you know, baton twirling someone taught her how to do ventriloquism and um she had these two puppets taffy twinkle and uh someone else who sounded surprisingly like lamp chop and charlie horse <laughs> and then she she saw a there was a woman etta something who um made felt dolls and she was a very famous felt artist hmm. in the uh, uh, yeah, I didn't know there was a, um, and I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> Felt yeah. Mom, mom commissioned lamb chop. Now what's interesting is I just found that story out a year ago because with hmm. my partner, uh, we've just written a biography on mom and co the story I had always heard was that somebody gave lamb chop to my grandpa and my grandpa gave lamb chop to my mom and said, if Sherry, if Mary can have a little lamb, why can't Sherry? Now oh. that was the story that I, that was the family legend. But then this guy reached out to me and he's like, um, just, you know, by the way, I just read an article where you said this, but in fact, my mom made this and, and he was hmm. perfectly lovely. I mean, like he wasn't trying to do anything right. nefarious. He was yeah. correcting the record. And I'm like, oh my God. Okay. I didn't know that. So, so now I am setting the record straight. Um, right here. Right now. Um, right which way is catering with Justine and yeah. Bruce right here? Yes, right here, right now. You two get the scoop. Um, but 
so that's how she got lamb chop. And now it gets fuzzy. It's amazing how much you don't ask your parents that you should, mm -hmm. you know, cause you're not that interested in them. Cause they're just your parents for God's sake. <laughs> um, and, oh, it comes to money. Hey dad, I need money. Yeah, exactly. So, and then, um, she had these puppets, Taffy Twinkle. Samson was the other one. And she had a daily TV show. I think it was daily in New York. And the Captain Kangaroo show called and said, we love you, but we hate your dummies. Do you have anything else? And she said, yeah, I've got a little lamb named Lamb Chop. Um, and a star was born. Wow. <clears throat> Very cool. That's I awesome. The star, twinkle, twinkle. <laughs> Lamb Chop. Yes, what you are the star, Lamb Chop. Yeah, she <laughs> is. Always. She's the star in my eyes. Oh. 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 So sweet. She is. She's so sweet. I'm so sweet and I'm sassy and I'm adorable and, <laughs> and modest and, <laughs> and fuzzy. Fuzzy. <laughs> be nice to be able to see you guys in person again soon yeah that'll be yeah that'll, that'll be great we'll we'll do that real soon mm -hmm. that'll be that'll be yeah. a given we got two guest rooms justine of course gets the big one but uh, you know, correct that's, princess that's right. she's the girl um, and I'll, I'll take you guys horseback riding and nice well i kind of want to just sleep in your closet <laughs> <laughs> I can fit my house in her closet. I know. How much room does Lamb Chop get? Lamb Chop gets a very large Tupperware where she hangs out with her friends. <laughs> with her friends. Also, she has, she has about a hundred different outfits. Why? And if you go, you go on my Instagram or, or Facebook, but Insta is all I really do on Insta is pictures of Lamb Chop. Um, she has a gown designed by Nolan Miller. She has fur coat. Um, she has many, many bathing suits. She has water wings, sweatshirts, uh, dress, sundresses, hats, um, um, some, she has a, a little bustier outfit. So uh, she's, when we, when we get our, uh, which way is catering with Justine and Bruce, uh, swag, we'll make sure we get something for lamb chop. I'm looking as we speak and there are some fantastic out right got cooking oh yeah lamb, lamb chops got some good ones look at the <laughs> look at the santa one oh, oh, oh so cute that's awesome yeah. yeah so well she's the size um many of them are custom made or were custom made um yes lamb chop firefighter but she's also the size of an 18 inch doll so like the american girl outfits or mm -hmm. the american girl they're perfect for her. And um, I have been amusing myself in COVID doing green screen photo shoots. The next one, she, I got her a tent and some camping gear. So I'm gonna <laughs> oh, fantastic. nice. Uh, and I got- Don't call it a barbecue. <laughs> no, and I got no. basically a Photoshop program, like, I don't know, Photoshop for idiots. The only <laughs> thing it does, it takes a background picture and you can move a, a green screen picture onto it. Like, cause I, I hired someone to teach me Photoshop and this lovely, lovely 22 year old young man. And he starts talking and start and about a minute into it. All I'm hearing is and I put up my hand, I go, okay. I go, this isn't gonna work. And he goes, no, it's simple. You just go wah, 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 wah. and I'm like, no, no. I go, let's Google photoshop for idiots and see yeah. if that program exists and basically it, there is one um yeah. so <laughs> you can learn how to do anything on, mm -hmm. the, on the internet yeah yeah well no there's a program that's basic that i think is called photoshop for oh, idiots or, yeah. or oh, green okay. screen for idiots it's just <laughs> there's no bells and whistles you could you can't do anything fancy but you can take picture A and lay it on background B. Whoa. <laughs> Boom, that's it. And that's all I need, you know. Oh, she you doesn't need anything, special else? anything she... else for uh, Mallory? Um, <coughs> yeah, I'm I, I'm cooking up one. Right. Um, okay, so back Don't to the- Don't say cooking up Why? with lamb chop around. Don't oh, say cooking sorry. to a- Sorry. Although my mom's favorite recipe was um, rack of lamb. 
And she used to love to order lamb in restaurants just to make people freak out. I love that. Lamb chops rack. And, some and she loved a good dirty joke. Mm -hmm. Something people don't know about my mom. She loved a good dirty joke. With corn dogs? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. You guys, you guys should do this um, with video. You can't eat an elephant in one bite. Is that what you just told me? Yeah. Yeah. How do this? you eat an elephant one bite at a time? One bite okay. At a time. One bite at a time. So I I'm taking like just that. the audio. I like lamb the chop audio I from the from the beginning. Yeah. Well, Lamb Chop and I would like to be the first guest on the video podcast that you do. Okay. okay. Love okay. it. Yes. I'll even uh, make sure she's actually present. I know. We don't even get to see her today. No, she's I, in a box. She's always in my mind. She's in a box. She's I, always I didn't in feel my like mind. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Justine brought her lamp. Justine so. brought her. Well, this one is actually signed because cool. you gave this That's to right. me. Yep, in 2017. What does that say? August, August 10th, 10th 2017. 2017. To Roland, who is my son. Love, Mally, and little Elsie. Yeah. Yeah, but you two look cute together. Like you were, a, I could see this as a, as a, a video thing. Me and Lamb Chop? <laughs> <laughs> well, and I. As a producer, this is my, me yeah. and my producer. Well, it, now. you know, it is Beauty and the Beast. Right. So. It, it, brains, it's, it's beauty. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's, it's very cute. And, and Justine, you look 12. So. Right. I do. Yeah. Well, and it helps that we've known each other for a while. What is it? 10, 12 years, 12 a dozen years. years. Mm -hmm. So it's, I mean, we've been working together for a long yeah, time. You got, a good, you got a good thing going. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Back to my question. Sure. And we'll, um, it was back to the producing. So you like the producing. I mean, do you see what's the future of the producing aspect of it? Do you see Lamb Chop like back on people's TV screens or what's it's, the future in that? More, it's a little more complicated than that. There's rights issues, which are too long and complicated to go into here. I, it, one of my favorites is people go, you know what you should do? You should do a TV series. And I'm like, wow, if only <laughs> I'd thought of that, Yeah, <laughs> you know? Right. I mean, it, it's a little more complicated than that. We do have a very big project in the works at the moment that I cannot announce yet, but it's going to be excellent. So that's really good. Big company. Oh, that's involved. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be but fantastic. I can't, yeah, I can't, I can't be any more specific than that. Um, yep. I, I hope that 2022 will be a more active year mm -hmm. than 20 and 21. Mm -hmm. um, one of my favorite things I've done this year is a hundred mile running challenge, um, which it's called We Are the Storm. And it's, on, it's like, you just go to wearethestorm.com and get your friends to sign up. And it doesn't matter how fast you run the hundred miles. I ran a marathon. I mean, it took me a month to run that marathon. <laughs> but A block at a but time. I still but I still ran a marathon. So yeah. I've started, I, I do like, I don't know, a mile a day, nothing mm -hmm. particular. I learned nice. how to sail. It's all right. I learned how to sail. Yeah. Um, and then that Tell me about your down. sailing. Tell, it got shut well, down, but uh, tell me about your sailing. I love it. I have, my captain is a 78 year old retired fighter pilot. And so he is, he's got all the fighter pilot, pilot swagger and, but he's 78. And I call him Captain Flirty Pants. And um, my that's a great and call I, sign, mm -hmm. like Maverick yeah, Goose, yeah. Mr. Flirty Pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And my cousin and I uh, learned how to sail together. Uh, and it was just, it was really fun. I, I love docking boats, sailboats. And turns out I'm really good at fitting things in a tight slip. Um, and Atta I, girl. Yeah. Yeah, you do. I had, I had so much fun. And then, you know, COVID got so bad in LA. He's 78. He's like, mm -mm, until I get the vaccine. Annoying thing about the vaccine process, you know, I see where um, like the first responders get their vaccine. You know, they have lists of what mm -hmm. order people mm -hmm. get vaccine in. Nowhere on that list is ventriloquist. Hmm. Nowhere. Or puppet. Uh, it's, or puppet. 
Lamb chop needs a vaccine. Uh, yeah. You know? That's the thing that actually, I, I don't know how it's going to turn out because I, in March, it was already starting. And um, I got to my last gig um, and I said to the guy, I'm like, I'm not doing an autographing. And he's like, yeah. He goes, well, what if, what if people stood on the opposite, like across a table from you? And I said, do you want to stand there and tell 500 people no, they can't take a picture with Lamb Chop? Because I would someone's gonna have yeah. to do that five hundred times, and he's like, "Yeah, you're right. Never mind." But I don't know when. I mean, I think performances will come back. Mm -hmm. I don't know, and nobody wants to take a picture in a mask, for God's sakes. Yeah, you know. Um, and I think we're all going to be a little more aware of, like, now when I go to the grocery store, someone comes within six feet of me. Like, I started traveling with my riding crop because I usually go to the store on the way back from the barn. I'd stuck my riding crop in my boot. And if I see someone without a mask within six feet of me, I whip it out and start waving it around. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Don't get near me and this won't be a problem for you. Or put on your mask. Um, That's but why I thought it was kind of ridiculous over the holidays when people would send you a Christmas card or whatever it was, and they had masks on. I mean, yeah. what does that like, mean? You're in your living room. You can take your yes. mask off. We're, we're trying That's to for we're trying to forget 2020. So you're gonna yeah. uh, solidify your Christmas card with the memory of 2020 with a mask on, yeah. and you're in different yeah. rooms Lamp taking Chop. your picture. Yeah, Lamb Chop has a little doctor's outfit with a really cute little mask on. I think that's on Instagram. Yep, I that's think cool. I saw that one. Oh, it's a little tiny oh, mask. I, I think I think like a stamp. I think my yearly physical is coming up. <laughs> uh, she's a doctor and she plays one on TV. <laughs> That's all right, Bruce. Bend over and cough. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> on that note. <laughs> That that uh, now Simon. that's that's my lamb job. No, 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 I gotta tell you one more story. Oh so, great. I was at the Magic Castle performing and uh, some drunk starts um, rah, 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 drunk. And uh, I ignore it. A minute later, rah, 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 drunk. I ignore it. A minute later, rah, 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 drunk. And finally, I look at the guy. I said, sir, would you like to come up on stage? And he goes, yes, I would. And Lamb Chop goes, Great, then Mallory can stick her hand up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> the audience roared. Like, and then the the stage manager plays my playoff music. I was in like the first five minutes of my act. And so I exited and I said, Why'd you play my playoff music? He goes, You weren't getting any funnier than that. Yeah, that's <laughs> like hit your peak. That's like drop the lamb chop. Good night, everybody. And I have been waiting for someone to her to heckle me on stage since, but nothing. Boop kiss. Right. Boop kiss. All right. Well, I love you guys. And uh, love you, you Mallory. Love, love you, Lamb Chop. But I love you, Bruce. I Ooh. love you, Justin. Love you. <laughs> no, I love you more. <laughs> no more. No, I love no you more. more. Oh, do it. Oh, stop it. Okay. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> yeah. Well, you did great. And you I love you both. And and um, you cheered me up, so this is cheaper than therapy. Right, Anytime, awesome, baby. Mallory. Okay, bye, guys. All right, see ya. See you. Get your backstage pass and subscribe wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Which way is catering with Justine and Bruce? Served up by Variety Attractions, celebrating sixty years of entertainment excellence. Find out how you can take advantage of their expertise in consulting, talent buying, production, and marketing services for your next event at varietyattractions.com.